thanks so much for stopping by. If you are a first time visitor, please make sure you hit my subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post something new. I am trying to increase the amount of videos that I'm posting each week. So uh, coming up with different ideas to do videos on you know, can be challenging. If you have any suggestions after watching this video, please make sure that you make a comment down below and tell me what you would like me to do in my up upcoming videos. I'd love to get some feedback. All right, today I went shopping and I was going to buy my normal red wine, white wine, Libby glasses to continue doing different designs on. Well, as I'm walking through the store's aisle, aisles, I discovered some different glasses. Have never actually used this particular company. It's Mason Foreign, or Foreign, looks like. And this is the Leona Pilsner beer glass, which I thought, you know, I, I like the regular Pilsner glasses, those are nice, but I think this kind of is a little bit more of a fancier looking glass for a beer glass. So what I'm going to start out by doing is showing you how I painted this particular design. It, obviously it's just black on the glass created as branches. That's not how I'm going to leave it. it I'm going to continue on with a uh, pattern that will be painted over it. But I thought, gosh, I really, really like these. You know, why not kind of veer off a little bit? So I bought some different white wine glasses and some different, basically, I believe that they're kind of like my smaller wine glasses where they're kind of generic, where you can drink either red or white, white wine out of them. So stay tuned for those as well. But I really liked these. And again, I'm not really familiar with this glass company, so I'm going to go with it still regardless. And the brush I use to paint this vine, or branch branches I should say, is again one of my favorite glass art brush, I guess, um, brush series maybe, is the Glass Art by Dynasty. This is a number 73, and it's a number 1, which I'm looking at it as more of a liner brush, but it doesn't really say... That that's what it's called. But anyways, I'm going to go with that. So, I've already cleaned my glasses, which obviously I did when I did this one. I'm going to be using the Folk Art Enamel Paint. It's the licorice, so it's the black. And I am going to just go through quickly how I did the vine, or the keep on a divine, I'm sorry. They're actually branches. And I'm just going to start at the, the base of the ball of the glass and just put my brush into the paint, kind of, I kind of roll it a little bit, trying to keep the tip nice and neat. Now the reason I, I switched to this one, because I was actually trying to use the uh, plaid one stroke brush, and I really kind of liked how this was covering and the type of designs I was getting out of it. So that's that's the reason why I'm not actually using a, a one-stroke brush because typically those have been my go-to. But I think, again, depending on what kind of design you're painting, it's you, that depends on what kind of brushes you use. And honestly, a, a good brush is worth everything. I mean, I truly do believe that what brush you're using is actually very important for the quality of work that you get out of it. Now if, if the quality, you're doing something for yourself and you're not really caring too much about that, then you know use whatever you have on hand. But I do find that, for me at least, the quality of the brush matters, plus the longevity of it too. And honestly, I'm not really great with the care of my brushes. And I read some people's posts about how they take care of their brushes. And in all honesty, I don't pay mine near the attention. Rinse them out and dry them standing up in my little water box thing that I have from way back when. 
I started doing uh, one stroke. So, you know, I don't pay attention to whether they're laying flat or however, but they still, even with me not doing much uh, protective care with them, they still last. So that says something for, for the brand. I know some people will wash them out with special kind of soap and Dawn soap honestly is probably one of the best soaps that I know of for painting and, and glass painting, washing your washing your glass, washing out your, the paint out of your brushes and so on. So I just stick with that. I think that's a good cleaner. It's a good cleaner and it doesn't seem to be abrasive. That makes sense. And I promised I wasn't going to talk too much during this part so that I could just speed it up, but finding that I'm talking a lot. So anyhow, whenever I do branches, I just kind of just go with it. I like when I'm doing a glass, and I think I've d demonstrated this on other in other videos. When I'm doing something that comes either with a vine of some sort or the design calls for branches, I like to do it part way going one direction and then have go then kind of do it the other direction with it so that they basically meet up at the the in the back side or whatnot. The branches will meet up with each other so that the branches are not actually just all going one way. Because I don't think that's really a typical flow for how nature goes. Nature grows. Nature grows, nature goes. At least that's not my take on it. I could be wrong. could be totally wrong. But that's why you have artistic expression. You get to express how you view things. Alright, so I'm going to cross over here a little bit. I just like to have them kind of running in all different directions. And it doesn't all have to be filled in because honestly I'm going to be painting a flower design. So that will cover a lot of this. And I'm just using different pressures on my brush. And that's why I'm getting some thick, some thin, and getting the different the different pressures will create a different outcome. And my inspirational design that I saw for this, I thought, oh, that's so pretty. Honestly, when these are done, I think that you can, you'll be able to see that maybe these would even be pretty wedding glasses. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a toasting glass. I know when my son got married, I painted different glasses for different parts of the, you know, whether it was for the toast or just for them to be drinking, and they had, they did have wine and beer. So I painted different glasses for that purpose, and it worked out nice. Doesn't all have to be champagne glasses and whatnot for your for your reception. These are even nice favors for the people that come to your your wedding. You know why not gift them with a glass that they can take home and use. And again, just keep in mind that with, with if you're glass painting and you're somebody that says, well, I don't drink, I don't either. I mean, I drink very little. Not to say that I don't ever serve alcohol when we have party, because I do, you know, when we have family over and whatnot. But it's nice. You can drink anything out of them. It doesn't have to even be wine. Or you could do regular drinking glasses. So, just, you know, keep that in mind, because I know some people are funny about the glassware. 
because I've even painted, I have a relative that she's, throughout her growing up, she's loved my painted glass. And it's, it's funny because you wouldn't think she would, but she did. She really, she liked when I gifted it to her. I made something special for her and obviously she didn't drink. Now she might be doing that now, but she didn't at the time. But there's more than wine glasses to paint too. I mean, and you also can paint on plastic. I've done a lot of painting on plastic ware, where you can, like even plastic plates and such, you know, the clear through plastic ones. They are beautiful when you're, they're painted. Obviously, with painting plates, you need to do reverse painting which I might show you. I actually saw a neat video today that I thought, oh, that would be awesome. I have kind of an idea of something I might try to do. Not sure how well it'll work out with any idea. It's kind of something where you can start them and think, oh, that was silly. Why did I even think about that? But I did, so here we go. All right, I'm just kind of looking around to see if there's any holes I need to fill. Again, I just want to keep them going in different directions so that it's not all one way. But I think it looks pretty good at this point. And there might be some areas that need to be kind of touched up. But again, I wouldn't worry about that. Because when you see the pattern that I'm going to be painting over them, it isn't really going to matter. It truly isn't. Alright, so there you go. I got that part done. And we're going to move on to the next step. And yes, my paint just rolled into my, my paint bottle just rolled into my paint. That's kind of how my day has been going. All right, let's move on. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to continue on uh, with the pattern over the top of these. One of these I blew dry, I don't know. Now I don't know which one it was. I thought it I did. Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm going to start with I'm sorry, I went the wrong color. Let me back up here. I'm going to be doing the, using a Royal, Lane, Royal Aqualon number no. 8 filbert brush. My lovely fine line Estonia brush, which is actually a fingernail brush. And then I'm going to keep this on hand, which is my number no. 1 gloss art by Dynasty number no. 73. As I showed you, was, that's what I actually did the did the uh, black vines or the black I keep doing that black branches with. All right, so let's get started here. So I'm just going to go with with the filbert and make these cute little flowers, and I'm just going to keep doing it all around the glass. And I am getting black in here. Shoot. Okay, hold on here. I thought I. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on. I started to do the video, and apparently the glass I chose was not actually dry enough yet. Hopefully this one is, because I did pick up way too much black. And I'm starting again. I keep forgetting to say what, what I'm using. Um, this is the Royal Aqualon number 8 filbert brush. I'm going to be using the Westonia Fine Liner. This is actually a nail painting brush. And then I'm going to keep this one, which is the glass art brush I've already told you about. Um, by Dynasty, it's number 71. It's number one, which I am assuming is a liner brush. Paints I will be using are the Moon Yellow. And that is, all these are folk art enamels. And that was a multi-surface. This one is parchment which is also multi-surface. And this one is my citrus green, which I love. That is an enamel. Quicker white, which is also an enamel. And then my thicket, which is also an enamel. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. 
I'm just going to randomly go around the brush, or go around the glass, excuse me. This I'm starting with the parchment color first. And just going around there. Now I do want to try to close up my center so I just have a little hole there. But I'm just going to touch lightly and quickly around the brush. And I keep saying I want to close up that center and for some reason I'm not doing that. Now we can overlap a little but I think I might wait to add my next coat on. And again this is just a real simple pattern. Whenever I do my glass painting I try to keep it simple so that it can be enjoyed by more than just a few. Looks like I might be starting to pull up some black, so I gotta be careful here because I really don't want to do that. And it's okay if it is in there because you know that when you are coming off of you know painting something that's still kind of wet, you're going to have that. That's a risk you take. You can actually allow more drying time than I have, but for the purpose of doing this video, I did not allow a lot of drying time. So my recommendation would be to, to do so. And I did hit it with a heat gun, so it should be somewhat dry, but I'm sure there are areas that are thicker that are not. So again, just keep that in mind. Now you can just add a few buds throughout or you can make it really full and if you want to have more of these black branches showing you'll know, leave more space in between and I'm not too concerned with the black showing right now because I am going to be going over it and again I want to try to keep my center closed as much as possible but I think with this pattern, I'm just going to, I am going to leave some of the branches open. So I am just going to do like little clusters. Just kind of how I'm, I'm painting it right now. And you can see that, I'm sure. I'll get back over these a little bit, make them a little bit bigger. I am going to overlap some because I will be coming back and overlapping. I'm going to do it like this. This is such a fun brush to use no matter which which size you use. It really is fun and you can use it. I'm going to be using it to create my petals too for my leaves. All right. Let's see, maybe I'll put another one down here. And I'm not really paying attention to how many buds or flowers I'm actually putting on here. Uh, if you know me too, you know a lot of times I do pay attention to whether or not I have even or odd numbers because I do like odd numbers for the buds or the flowers, open flowers, whatever. I mean, it's all... For me, it's all the same. Whether it's opened, closed, partially open, it doesn't matter. And these are just going to be little buds that I'm putting in throughout. Alright, I think I'm going to leave it at that. For that color, I am going to rinse my brush out. So, I am then going to go over these with white, and I'm just not trying to cover the whole petal. I can cover the whole petal, but that's not the intent. It's just to give it some more depth. And you can use different color combinations. It doesn't have to be white even. Let's do that one here. And just putting it over the top. I mean, it can cover the top. It just doesn't matter. It's just really 
quick and easy, quick and easy. You know what would be pretty even too would be a combination of the white and maybe like a pink, a magenta, you know, something along that sort. Pull that in there. And on this I do like to see the brush strokes because it kind of tells me where, which direction they're actually going, especially when I'm overlapping. If I'm overlapping a, another flower, which again in nature happens all the time. Okay, if you're, if you're there, I'm not sure how much of this got cut off. I happened to look up and my video card apparently had run out of video space. So I had to stop and clear that out. So I apologize if you missed a lot of this. Basically, I'm just going over the originals that were painted with white. This is the wicker white. And this is one reason why I said two but it didn't matter so much about the black showing through because I was going to be going over it anyways. So, here we go. Back at it and hopefully I can get this done without it running out. Or something else running out. I've had one of those kind of days. You ever have those days? Well, today is that day for me, I think. Could be worse though, right? Always be worse. So, here we go. Let's try to get this wrapped up before anything else happens. And yeah, like I said, you don't have to completely cover these up. It's just more of a random thing where you're just going to go around and just kind of just quickly, quickly hit it. Now, could you put these two colors together and do this together? Sure. But I'm trying to do some different paint, painting techniques, so I don't really necessarily want to do that all the time. Alright, so here you have that. The next thing I'm going to do is to go back in to each one of the actual flowers that are open and then just tap in some of the moon yellow for the centers. So obviously this is a very easy center. Couldn't be any easier. Just tapping in the centers. That's kind of why I wanted to keep them keep them closed. But sometimes I don't do that, but it depends on the the kind of center I'm going to put in. With this one kind of being relatively small. I didn't want to have a big, too big of a gap. This one is probably bigger than what I really wanted, but it's okay. We always find a way to make it work out, right? I always find a way. And just, you know, they don't all have to be the same size, obviously. They're not going to be the way I'm tapping them in here. And there's still another step coming, like this one is, this one's huge. All right, just keep it going. Now with the short little stem that this has, now you could paint the base black or the stem black if you wanted. And like I said, you could do a lot more flowers on this glass if you wanted to. I just wanted to leave it open so I could add some more green. Or add some green, not more green. Add green. Do this especially with choosing to do a lighter color flower. You know, adding the, the green to it will make it pop more, I believe. 
All right, so I think I got all the centers. The next step is to take this lovely nail brush, and I'm just sticking it in the pan, kind of wiping it off a little bit. And this part, you, you could either hit it with a dryer if you wanted to, but it's just mainly to put some interest out from the center with the black. And again, some of this is going to be thicker paint, so, you know, it may not work as well. But it's just to bring it out as lightly or thick as you want. And just randomly, or not randomly because I'm going to do it on all of them, but have a center. And just keep, like I said, I love this brush. You, you know, can do it with a regular liner brush if you want. I just happen to really enjoy this brush. So, that's why I'm using it. See, it's just easy, 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 easy. And if you feel like you're getting too much paint on this on the liner brush, then wipe it off. You can always wipe it off. Like I said, my biggest concern right here is touching the flowers while I'm turning the glass because of where I'm holding it. That'll be the next thing. So I've had a little bit of everything happen through this video. Bloopers and all that good stuff. So I never said I wouldn't keep it interesting. And go over that little hump. If you like this video, then make sure that you give me a big thumbs up. Again, make sure that if you have in any interest, anything that interests you that you'd like for me to do a video on, I'm just I'm all I'm all ears right now trying to come up with some different things to paint. Got some little things I'm doing around my house that maybe I might share with you. I used to do that kind of stuff quite often and kind of got away from it. But I'm finding that I miss it. I really don't do a whole lot of painting in my own house anymore. Because I used to do a lot of painting on walls. That's actually where my love comes from I really like doing decorative painting but I think that's why I like the glass painting so much because it's my way of, of being able to do it in a small scale but still do it oops I almost forget this one down here And you can make the center maybe a different color. I have a, a neat brush coming, or I think I ordered a couple in different sizes that I can't wait till I get them because I think honestly they're going to be great for doing centers with. Not that I've actually seen them do centers. I think they should be coming soon, which will be really, really fun. Now, I'm going to go ahead, like I mentioned, and do some, do some of these uh, little leaves with this brush. And I'm just doing right now, 
I'm just doing it with the thicket green. And I think I'm going to, around these buds, put a little bit of greenery around them too. And then, that's why I say that's one reason I wanted this to be open a lot so I could put these in. Kind of fill it in with, with some leaves. And I'm going to do these leaves basically about the same way I did, did the others. I did the petals around the, the um, flowers. Is doing one color at a time. And I'm just doing like just a single color and just tipping it in. Just nice little easy, easy little strokes. And they'll stand out a little bit better once I get my other color in here too. You'll be able to see them better. Just gonna do basic, these basic pole leaves. Nothing fancy on this glass. I don't think it needs it. I think it's um, fancy enough, pretty enough without having to add any kind of fancy leaves on it. Just my opinion. Hopefully, you feel the same. I'm just gonna put just some single single here too. Well, actually that one I'm going to go like that. Put some singles down here. You now I can get a little crazy with leaves. I'm not, I'm trying not to. So I'm just going to wash, not wash, but wipe my brush out a little bit. And then I'm just going to go back over with a little bit, just a swipe of, of this color. So you can actually still see the, the darker green. Just a swipe, 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 swipe. Got a little bit too much on that. Put that again. That's why I say it's just a very simple, simple design. You know, you could easily do the branch in browns you wanted. I did not do that in browns because of my inspiration was in black and I like I like the difference. This doesn't at all have to be like on the bud you can just add another little leaf if you want. Oops. Get into the right green here I'll be fine. So again it's just just a quick little swipe. Swipe swipe And if you watch my channel, once again, by adding more color like this on top, what does that do with the paint? What happens when you have a little bit thicker coverage? If you know, let me know down below. I don't like to have too thick a paint in my brush. I just don't. I don't like it. And this one I could do up here. And you can always, if you think that you've got too much of one color, you can always go back over it and, you know, like say with the original color, if you think that you put the top color on too heavy. It's okay. You can just go back over it. But just see how that just adds so much, so much to it. And you don't have to stick with two. I don't know. I'm just, I'm funny with leaves because I do like them a lot. I 
and I can add you know, a third one here if I want. Like I said, filbert brushes, I don't use a whole lot, but I do really like the designs that they make and how easy it is to do you know, your leaves, your the flower buds, the, you know, the flowers themselves. This makes very easy. So I'm going to go around and do kind of like this with it. Some of the open buds. Like I said, you could see where you could possibly, you know, filled in with more flowers, but I just don't, just didn't feel the need to do that. Really don't. So I kind of want to do that. But if you see places where you want to add, you know, just go ahead and do it. Now's the time to do it. There you go. Look how pretty that is. I mean, just a basic... I mean, it's just beautiful, I think. Very pretty. Very, very... I mean, even if it's just dainty looking, it's just, it's beautiful. I hope you like it too. If you do, give me a big thumbs up. Make sure, if you haven't done this already, that you subscribe to my video. Or my channel, I should say, sorry. To my channel. And hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever I post something new. Again, I would love to have a comment if you have any suggestions, like the video, whatnot, you know, feel free to give me a comment below. And make sure that you also help me out by sharing, 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 sharing this video. Friends and family, there's a, there's a tab underneath the video that will allow you to do that very easily. And I surely would appreciate it. Alright, so that's it for this video. Until the next one, you have a good one.